Hi design enthusiasts, welcome back to another properly fashion video. Today I wanted to share three things I wish I knew uh, when I started out my fashion design career. I think it's very useful information if you are thinking about going to school for it, if you are interested in design or are transitioning and, and thinking about more about the fashion design accessories field. So who am I? I am a recent Parsons graduate for fashion design, um, are historically one of the best fashion schools in the world. Um, I am a leather craftsperson now. I, I make and design bags, shoes, hats, um, and I had a background in tailoring. And so I've kind of been through the ringer of, of jobs and internships. And, and so here we are now, um, just sharing some of my thoughts and, and um, advice for you. So let's get to it. Number one, first thing is to not look at the averages. And so if you look at Google and then find the average salary or the what the average designer's day looks like, um, you're gonna look more at the median. So 99% of designers are, you know, if you're lucky, you're, you're, you're working a regular job and that's, you know, that's great. And then you look at the um, you look at the high end the people designing at luxury boutique houses, and they're you know these kind of celebrity, ethereal figures, and they're making a lot more. And when deciding and and hearing people say like, hey, don't do that because you could do a lot, you could make a lot more uh, money, you could have a much healthier lifestyle if you did something else. Um, if you're if you're somewhat artistic, um, they might try to sway you into a different area, or um, just just help you reconsider. And that, you know, logically speaking, that is something that that is beneficial for you. You know, it is not a very lucrative business if you are not at that top one percent of designers. Um, but at the same time, don't sell yourself short. Um, believe in yourself. And, and, you know, there's a lot of great things that you can learn and a lot of great experiences inside of the industry that you'll, you'll, you won't have with, with anything else. So, you know, take the numbers with a grain of salt. If you really enjoy designing and making clothes, uh, design and make clothes and, and make things that, that make you happy and make other people happy. And I think at the root point of it, if it's something that you want to do and you're excited about, go for it. Don't think about the numbers yet. Don't think about any of like the wide scale picture. Do it because you enjoy it. Um, so that brings us to number two, which is some of the some of the more realistic aspects that start to sink in. So if you are going to school or um, working on your own brand. Um, or working for, you know, something else, but are, are thinking of making a transition to design, you'll need to know a few things. Um, it is a very, very intense regimen that you, you, you would go through in terms of learning all sorts of fabrics, all sorts of construction details, um, how to put together design decks and, and, and templates and, um, presentations and portfolios, and also creating um, spec sheets and, and creating that design and the inspiration and telling a story through whatever um, collection you're trying, to, you're trying to show that in. And then you get to the making process. And, and I, I really advocate for the making process just because you don't have to make anything when you work in a corporate design job you're mostly sketching and you're mostly creating flats and, and spec sheets and um but i advocate for making because it it allows you to see what that 2d element that you're drawing you put that to you put that to the test with yourself but in understanding what it, what it is that you're really drawing because realistically starting out i drew anything that my brain came up with and a lot of those would be super complex and, and super like just it it didn't make sense in the real world but it was cool on paper when you would try to put that 
into pattern and into um in, and and breathe this like reality of three dimensions into it um sometimes you'll find that it doesn't work or it's way too complicated that it doesn't make sense for the cost and having the ability to to know how that pattern side and the ID, ideation side interact with each other um, it just solidifies your design philosophy it can help you understand what you're actually doing it's it's having that conversation between two of them so you could what I do now in my process I sketch something I sketch a bag I sketch a jacket and then I try it out and in the pattern and then I think in like how do I make this in the in the pattern sphere or in like the construction sphere and so I think about that I'm like okay so this corner's gonna be it has to be a little bit different than the drawing so it makes sense and it could actually stand in this particular way that I want it to and then I bring that back to the drawing sphere or the ideation stage and I think okay so now that's a little bit different how can we make it still look aesthetically pleasing while being functional in the sense that it, it can exist three-dimensionally. With that, you're going to spend so much time making and, and thinking and being in your head and going out and getting inspiration. You're going to have 16-hour days plus for extended periods of time where it's just you and your craft. And that could be really, really, really draining. Um, you, you know, a lot of people start to just, <clears throat> it, it goes pretty dark. Um, but the good thing is you have a bunch of other interests, right? So it's not only fashion. Fashion can be your passion, as many people say. Um, but I really would urge, especially my younger self, to explore some other things as well. Like right now I'm learning how to play the guitar. Um, I've been you know, doing, doing other hobbies, going on hikes, um, going camping, um, and, and really just having some time outside of fashion, because then you start your design and your ideas, and it, it all starts to go back into each other, where you want to slowly breathe in some new ideas, um, think of it as a fire, if, if the fire is in an enclosed space, it's going to slowly die out, whereas if you have some new oxygen tubes coming in at it it's going to grow and grow and you're just going to have a wider and wider view of uh, inspiration and that follows into whatever it is that you're making um so have some uh, have some other interests but also know that you're going to be spending so much time in in multiple different crafts that it's okay starting out like you're going to have to do some graphic designing, you're gonna have to do some sketching, you're gonna have to do some technical bits, and then you have to pattern and, and, and learn how to sew and learn how to do other whole bunch of different things in that realm. So once you know how to do those things, get some other interests, because it's really gonna help you out. The last thing I wanted to say really quickly is that fashion design may not be your end goal. The industry is so wide, um, and it might just be the stepping stone to figuring out where you eventually want to go. So, for example, I was talking to my roommate who also went to the same school that I did. But both of us had two very different paths gradu upon graduation. Um, I went into the more sales route. And Bella was going more in the repair and the machine repair section. So there are many avenues of production and marketing and, and, and all these other branches of fashion that might be might be the path or it might help you realize that okay I just like to make things or I just like to design things but it doesn't have to be clothing specifically um, it could be designing like I found out I love designing leather goods and accessories and I was good at that um, so that was kind of going from fashion clothing into fashion accessories that in itself seemed like a big switch to me um but there could be many many following switches after that that help you just figure out more and more of what is the most
truest version of yourself. Um, and I think just picking jobs and, and things to do with your time to get to that true version is, is essentially what like hopping from different positions are. Cause there's obviously something about a position that intrigues you outside of the money. Um, and so spending the time to, to keep on discovering what that is, is very valuable. Um, so maybe it not be, it, so it might not be design, but another thing I wanted to bring out was there is a lot, a lot of things in the world. And <clears throat> something I learned from one of the, um, the managers that coaches, you could also go where you're needed. And that is a great thing. There's enough design and there's the, enough making new things. Maybe there's a market for repairing the old things that are already exist. Um, so that's something you could consider if you're still, you know, thinking about your journey. But I hope this video helps. Um, if you liked, um, please like and subscribe. This is Properly Fashioned. We talk about design um, and that, that whole creative process journey. So stay tuned for more. See you next week.